we want to welcome you to worship with Grace Lutheran Church. Just to let you know, our service includes the celebration of Holy Communion, which we invite you to prepare for at home. If you do have not done that before and you would like some instructions, you can go to our website, www.gracelc.org, look under resources uh, for information about Holy Communion. We're very glad that you've joined us for worship and hope that you find the service inspirational. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace through the power and promise of Jesus Christ. Our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Come now As you are or as you want to be Are you ready? Are you ready? Come now. Tired, broken, scared, or just in need. Ready or not, it's alright. Take your time, if nothing else, just come. Let me 
smile about the hidden stuff Let me smile about the heart not gone Now, for all we've seen, we ain't seen nothing yet Are you ready? He's already paid our debt He's already done the miracle He's already gone to death He's the light and salvation He's a rock solid hope He's already done enough for us He's already doing more He's already seen the end in He's already seen us through He's already breaking out in us He's already on the move He's already won our battles He's already paid the way He's already gone ahead of us And He's ready when we all come Now all we've seen, we've ain't seen nothing yet Are you ready? Are you ready? Now, now Bring Him praise for what He's gonna do next Are you ready? Are you ready or not so The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempests carry them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their hosts and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. He strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exalted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here ends the reading of the lesson. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, 
they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of the Lord. Today we are talking about how Jesus spent his day. We read in the Bible about one of the first days of Jesus' ministry. He healed people, he talked to people about the good news, and he went and he cared for people who were not necessarily going to like him. So how did Jesus get the strength to do all that? Where did he get the ideas of what he should be doing with his life? Well, the Bible says that Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath. That's like us going to church on Sundays or even watching church on our televisions or our computers. It also tells us that very early in the morning, Jesus went to a deserted, quiet place to be by himself where he could rest and pray. That's how Jesus got the renewal, the ideas, and the energy to do what he needed to do. His power came from focusing on his relationship with God the Father. You know, we need that same kind of time. We need to rest. We need to pray. We need to spend that time if we're going to be Jesus' disciples in the world. Let me explain it to you by using these talking cups. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I'm really parched. I'm kind of confused, and I need a little help. Can you help me? I don't know. <laughs> I've been so busy. I've just been working and working, and now I don't, what did you want from me? Well, I just need a little help in hand. I just need you to listen. I just need a little help. I need a little water. How about some water? Well, I, I don't know. I'm pretty tired, but uh, let me see. Uh, sorry, bud, I can't help you. Okay. Hey, sir, sir, I need some help. I, I, need to, I need to hear some good news. I need a little help. I don't know, I'm kind of dry, and, and can you help me? Why, I think I can. I just got back from having a little bit of time. I was praying and spending some time with God and had a little bit of time with my family, so I'm feeling pretty good. What can I do to help you? Well, if you could just give me a little water, that would be really good. Sure, I'll help you, and I'll have some more for myself. Thank you, thank you. Now what we learn from the talking cups is you can't pour water from an empty cup. And in our lives, we can't help each other unless we take time for prayer, for worship, and to be with God. Amen. 
One of my most vivid memories of worship took place nearly 40 years ago. It happened at First English Lutheran Church in Conway, Pennsylvania, one of the first congregations that Pastor Kevin and I served. We had a guest preacher who came from the Lutheran Service Society of Western Pennsylvania, and it was Stewardship Sunday. The chancel area of First English was not very large. In fact, the pulpit literally sat in the choir loft. So when you preach, the choir members were barely an arm length away. Pastor Pedersen was a bit of a fiery preacher to begin with, and that Sunday he was wound up, determined to help people understand their role in Christian stewardship. I will never forget the moment he said, if I look at your checkbook, I can tell you what your priorities are. And then he turned to my friend Linda, the choir director, and said, give me your checkbook. Yeah, <laughs> her eyes popped out of her head. And fortunately for her, the choir members didn't have their purses with them. Well, it was a memorable occasion, but the preacher was right. Today we would say, look at your debit or credit card statement and you'll be able to tell what is most important in your life. I would add that we can look at our calendars, whether they're paper or electronic. They too will give us the facts. What really matters to you? I believe that this kind of exercise should be undertaken a couple times a year by each and every one of us. We need to take stock of our time and our resources. What is most important, not in our dreams, but in our everyday lives? Annie Dillard wrote, How we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. What we do with this hour and that one is what we are doing. So often we plod through our days, always thinking that tomorrow will be different. I'll get my act together tomorrow. Next week, I'll make sure that the family goes to church and I will take my kids to Sunday school. Next year, I'll have more time to volunteer. After I get that big promotion, I'll increase my giving to the church. Annie Dillard is right. The plain, ordinary days are what makes up the sum total of our lives. It isn't what happens tomorrow, but it's what's happening today that really counts. After all, today's practices become tomorrow's habits. Over the last few weeks, we've been working our way through the first chapter in Mark's Gospel. It's interesting that verses 21 through 39 are described as taking place in slightly over a day, about 36 hours. And this day was in the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. We can learn a lot from looking at how Jesus spent his day. We can see his priorities, and some of them might surprise you. According to these verses in Mark's Gospel, Jesus' Sabbath day began in the synagogue, and the next day began in a deserted place where Jesus had gone to rest and pray. Anything else that Jesus did was bookended by scripture, worship, and prayer, focusing on his relationship with God the Father, was foundational for Jesus. Notice, too, that Jesus spent time at home with those closest to him. Remember that Jesus described himself as someone with nowhere to lay his head. 
You see that in scripture, and we're told by local folks in Israel that Jesus spent much of his time at the home of Simon and Simon's mother-in-law. Like the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, the home of Simon was as close to home as Jesus had. After being at synagogue, Jesus went home with his friends. It might sound something like your life before COVID. Jesus spent much of his day caring for the needs of others, whether at home, healing Simon's mother-in-law, or among the people of the community who crowded around the door where he was. He healed many physically and brought good news of hope to all of them. It's important to note that the next morning, after his time of rest and prayer, Jesus was ready to press on. He was headed to a new place, a place in which he might very well be rejected. The good news of God's mercy and power needed to be extended to ever-widening circles of people. So what do we learn from Jesus' opening day of ministry? Worship, prayer, and devotion are foundational. Our relationships begin with family and friends. Service to others begins at home. We need to push out into ever-widening circles of care, and that might mean pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zone. As we attempt to live out that kind of Christian discipleship, we'll recognize that we quickly fall short. In fact, many times. We grow weary and get discouraged. Our financial statements and our calendars will not always correspond with the values that we carry in our hearts. Our days will get caught up in matters that are not of eternal consequence. That's where our reading from Isaiah comes in. Isaiah is speaking on God's behalf to the people of God who have grown weary and discouraged. Originally, Isaiah spoke to the exiles who longed for their return to Jerusalem. Today, I hear those words being spoken to us, people who long to come back to community with others. Chapter 40 of Isaiah reminds us that God is the creator, but that creation was not a one-time activity. God, who created the universe, continues to be creative day in and day out. God's Holy Spirit upholds us, strengthens us, and gives us the power to be creative as well. The Holy Spirit molds our fragile and broken lives into lives that really count, lives that make a difference in the world around us. My friends at Christ, this day in the year 2021, nearing the end of a worldwide pandemic, may we hear Isaiah's words with fresh meaning and hope for us all. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with eagles' wings. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. This morning, we are invited to consider ways in which we can support the ministry of Grace Lutheran Church, uh, a way that we can make the good news of hope cast out to ever-widening circles of people. We invite you by your gifts to help us in this important work of proclaiming God's love 
in this community and throughout the world. Let us pray. O God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministries, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle and rainwater they drink, for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials and CEOs for international health organizations that in times of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they find freedom in service to those most in need. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive services, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sicknesses, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you, let us pray. Have mercy, O God, for this congregation for outreach and social ministries centered here at Grace, for parish nurses and visitors, for ministries of companionship and support, for the young people in this place who open us to new understandings, let us pray. Have mercy, O God, in thanksgiving for the faithful departed who were called by name and now rest from their labors, that their lives of service as witnesses to the goodness of God, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel. 
Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen.
God the Creator strengthen you, Jesus the Beloved fill you, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.